So these short fragments were discovered quite recently by a colleague of mine, Jane Fernandes, at the BFI National Archive. And she discovered them when somebody decided they wanted to restore one of our 1920s films, a film that was in Technicolor. And she noticed that the leaders on the reels, that's the strip of celluloid that makes up the film, were tiny little fragments, a clips of different films. What they say uh, in archaeology is, you know, all the best stuff is in the rubbish pile. And the reason we think that these survived as sort of leaders and ends and heads and tails on this other uh, film that we've got is because they were redundant. They didn't need them anymore. They'd done the test and it was surplus to requirements. So they just used the spare bits of film to attach to the ends of the reels so that when they roll through the projector, they don't don't get damaged, which is a, a very odd place to, to find your bits of film, but there they've been hiding for decades. Remarkably, these turn out to be lost films, many of them, and containing some fabulous actors that we're very glad to see more of, however short, including people like Louise Brooks in a film called American Venus, which was her first credited role, I think, for Hollywood in the movies. To find even three seconds of her with her beautiful dazzling smile in this tiny little fragment is quite precious. There are other films with other famous performers that we're glad to see more of. Hedda Hopper is one in a film called Mona Lisa. And there are some fantastic dance sequences from musicals, very, very early musicals, right at the beginning of the talkies. The significance of these fragments is the colour, which um, is what we were really looking for when the discovery was made. So they're all a system called Technicolor. We associate the word Technicolor with these bright, spectacular colours. Uh, very few people know what it is. So it's developed in the 1920s and it lasts uh, decades. And a lot of people remember it with fondness and particularly a lot of big, lavish musicals, things like The Wizard of Oz. And it is a thing that we're trying to look for because it's now very rare and it's quite unusual to find original Technicolor fragments from which we might one day be able to piece together a film or a part of a film. So the process for the Technicolor in these fragments is mainly what we call uh, two-strip Technicolor and that is where they take basically a red element and a green element and they film through the, the camera through filters and then the two halves are sort of sandwiched together. And from the mixture of red and green, you can get other colours. To our eyes, it looks slightly unnatural. It's very red and green, and um, it's quite difficult to get a real blue for the sky or for the sea or whatever. So it can look a bit strange to us. But at the time, it was completely revolutionary. It's always a real joy to open a can and sort of find something undiscovered, a complete gem. And this one was a particularly rich theme, I think because their colour as well. They've got that sense of specialness. We can now, just from these fragments, tell a lot more. The number of these kinds of films from the silent era and the early talking picture era that are turning up in archives is getting less and less as we go on through the years. So we used to find these things in cinema collections, you know, at the back of old cinemas. We used to find them in laboratories where they were just left on shelves uh, for one reason or another, a bit forgotten, or in the hands of private collectors. Uh, this sort of generation is, is going. It's becoming more and more and more rare. So this is a, is a good discovery. So some of these fragments are little clips of the existing films. Some of them are tests. So things like screen tests, where they were testing out an actress to see if she was the right person for the film. Or they might be doing costume tests, where they're testing out to see if a costume looks good in a particular setting. There's some great tests where people are just sort of mugging for the camera and just making those stupid, stupid faces just to uh, give a bit of movement and um, show that they could do, you know, a range of expressions. There's a nice one called uh, Carl Dane is a sailor with a sort of pipe in his mouth and making in these sort of grotesque faces. It's, it's funny just to see a little bit of character of that, that actor that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. You 
You've got to get up sometime. Yeah? Well, make it some other time. Oh, boy. Whoopee! Hippie! Ah! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I don't even know your husband. Oh. Oh, what time is it? Pretty near noon time. Is that all? Isn't that enough? It's never enough. This is a fantastic, what we call a revusical or musical um, called Show of Shows. And we've just intercut from the colour fragment into black and white so you can get a better sense of how it fits into the picture. So what we do now is to transfer these into the digital domain and then we can restore the picture digitally. But we need to have these original fragments in colour to be able to recreate the colour. Sometimes the films only survive in black and white, but if we've got these little fragments we can tell what the colour system was and what the kind of balance is of one colour to another. And from that we can recreate colour in the whole of the picture. So even though we've only got these tiny, tiny fragments, they can be incredibly useful for restoring a film back to its former glory. 